So, how can quantum mechanics help explain a white dwarf? Well, let's think about the problem. We've got this small star with absolutely incredibly intense gravity, but no nuclear fusion going on. Now let's zoom in on the surface. See his little surface layer. That weighs a lot. So there's a very strong gravitational pull down towards the center. Because it's not falling in, it's just sitting there, there must be an equal and opposite force outwards to balance the gravity downwards. And remember, because these things are so dense and so small, that gravity is very intense, so it must be a very strong force outwards to balance the gravity. What is this force? Well, it's caused by pressure. But what is pressure? Well, pressure is just the cumulative effect of being hit by atoms and molecules. So what's happening here? There's the inside edge, and you've got lots of atoms, electrons, protons, whatever, and they're flying in, and they bounce off the insides in very large numbers. You don't get sore by being hit by one atom. Ow! That atom hurt me. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. But there are so many billions upon trillions of atoms sitting that their cumulative effect can be quite strong, and that's what pressure is. So the idea would be that in a normal star, the pressure inside is very high, so vast numbers of atoms are bouncing off the inside of the surface layers, and their impacts apply enough net force to balance the downward gravity pull. But there's a problem. These atoms must be moving really fast to supply enough force, which means their temperature is high. But if they're very hot, the heat will leak out. The heat will radiate out into space somehow. It might be conducted through there and then radiated out into space. So they will get cooler and therefore slower. And if they're slower, there will be fewer impacts and the impacts will have less oomph behind them. And so the pressure will go down. So no longer balanced gravity and the star will shrink. As it shrinks, it compresses what is inside and makes it hotter again. But once again, that heat will radiate out. And so the whole star will shrink smaller and smaller and smaller until it's no size at all. So that doesn't work. What we need is something that stops these moving particles from slowing down below a certain speed, kind of like a minimum possible speed. And that's what quantum mechanics in the form of degeneracy pressure gives us. What's the idea? Well, here we've got our star, which is shrinking, and it's got a whole bunch of electrons in it. Now, from the Pauli exclusion principle, we know that the electrons cannot all be, to no two electrons can be in the same state. So one way to think about that would be to divide our white dwarf into little cubes. And we'll put one electron in each cube. Now, the electrons can move back and forth inside the cubes, but they can't trespass into another cube because that would be overlapping in state with another electron. But now let's look at one of these cubes and apply what we know about quantum mechanics. The electron, remember, behaves like a probability wave. So let's for the moment just imagine it's going to be a wave along one dimension. It could be like a guitar string. It could be in the ground state, which is something like this or it could be in the first excited state, or it could be in the second excited state, and so on. But it's always going to have an integer number of waves across the length. Now, for any wave, whether it be a light wave or an electron, the shorter the wavelength, the more the energy. So the lowest energy will be this blue state, and the green and yellow lines would have more energy, and so a state like this would be a very energetic state. Now, normally, if you're on something like the sun, most of the electrons are in states like this. They're in the little cube, but they've got very wound up in terms of their wavelength, so they have way more than the minimum energy. But what quantum mechanics tells us is the wavelength can get longer and longer and longer, but the longest it can be is when you've only got one wavelength covering the entire length of the box. And that, it can't be longer than that, because then it would have to not be zero at one end, so it wouldn't be a proper standing wave. And that is what the uncertainty principle encapsulates. It tells us 
delta p delta x is greater than h bar over 2. So this is the momentum kind of related to the energy. And what that's telling us is as the box becomes smaller, the, the longest wavelength you can have also becomes smaller, which means the momentum becomes larger. So there is a lower limit to the momentum corresponding to the size. I'm going to do a very approximate, very rough calculation to show how a white dwarf can work. The full calculation is too complicated for this course, but we can get the basic physics and a, a roughly right answer out by making some big approximations. So let's start off by thinking about electrons stuck in a box. This box could be one cubic meter of white dwarf material or one cubic meter of anything really. And let's assume we have a number of electrons per unit volume, so a number density of electrons of Ne. So that's the number of electrons per unit volume. Now, all the electrons can't be in the same space because of the Pauli exclusion principle. They all have to have their own discrete identity. They can't all sit in the same state. So each electron, so we've got an electron there, has to have its own unique volume. So let's assume each has a cube like this. As the electron is trapped in that volume, uh, it's going to the, the size of this volume, the size of each side here, is the uncertainty in its position, delta x. And what is delta x? Well, each electron has a volume delta x cubed, that being the, the volume of a square of each size delta x, and there are n e electrons in one unit volume. So what that's telling us is that delta x is equal to 1 over the cube root of Ne. So that's Ne to the minus a third. Now if we have that uncertainty in its position, that means there's going to be an uncertainty in the momentum. So the uncertainty in the momentum times the uncertainty in the position is going to be h bar. That's Heisenberg uncertainty principle, so the uncertainty in the momentum is going to be h bar over delta x, so that's going to be h bar Ne to the plus one third. So that tells us that the electrons are not still, they have momentum, uh, and there's an uncertainty in it, and that's going to be roughly equal to the momentum. Some are going to be going forward, some are going to be going backwards, this is the momentum in one direction. So roughly speaking, the uncertainty is going to be about the size of the momentum. So Roughly speaking, it's again not a very good approximation, but close enough for this work, the momentum is going to be about the size of the uncertainty, and given by this.